Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to review Star Valor. This is a game that you can find on Steam for about 25 bucks. I've been playing this game off and on throughout Early Access, and now that the game has been released from Early Access, I thought I'd spend some more time with it, get reacquainted with it, and so far I'm having a good time with it. Um, this is a top-down action RPG-esque freelancer style game for those of you that don't know what freelancer is uh, well if you're an old school guy like me then you'll know what freelancer is but for those of you that don't freelancer is one of those games where typically you have the ability to free roam around a galaxy of sorts or maybe even a solar system depending on the game and you're going to be trading goods or doing combat or uh, doing whatever your heart desires in order to level up your ship earn money uh, buy more weapons or even crap more weapons and so on so you're just improving yourself as you go uh, this is one of those games where you're going to be again top down exploring doing quests uh, taking jobs from bounty boards. Again, freelancer fans will know what I'm talking about. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look around here. Now, because this is going to be more of a review, I'm not going to play the game as much. My job is just to simply show you everything. But here's the options menu. We'll just pause if you want to see any of this in greater detail. I'll just sort of blow through this as much as possible. Um, if you do decide to untoggle full screen, um, you know, you can adjust the resolution from here, which is nice. Audio sliders, and lastly, controls. I highly recommend coming here and figuring out what you like. Um, I've rebound a number of the keys. There is the ability to switch between keyboard movement and uh, mouse movement in-game. I'll show you that when we get there. Um, I do have a complaint, though. When you're actually in keyboard control, I don't seem to have the ability to strafe. Even though, um, it's weird. In, in one mode I can strafe, in one mode I can't strafe. I've been messing with the controls trying to get strafing to work with the one, but, uh, that, that's just one of my complaints with the con controls at this point in time. Uh, let's go ahead and if I hit new game just to show you what you can play. There's standard, streamer casual, and arena. Under streamer casual, um, it's just a faster play mode where you level up more quickly. Um, there's also the ability to toggle collision damage. You can play the tutorial mission. You can choose the galaxy size anywhere from six tiny to unlimited, which is unstable. Um, there's also relaxed difficulty, normal and hardcore. The only thing I don't like about the relaxed mode is that it actually limits your perks. So it says unlock basic perks only. So if you want to unlock more things, then the game is forcing you to play on normal. Luckily, the game isn't that intensive. I'm playing on normal right now. And yes, on occasion, I run into a zone that is definitely more challenging than I can handle. I simply run away and grind out some more levels doing other things, and I come back to it. Um, I do that all the time in Drox Operative, uh, which is another top-down, similar-style game to this. Anyway... So you can choose your background from here and you can unlock more backgrounds as you play, but this will sort of tell you, you know, where your background is and what your buffs will be should you choose that background. You can, you can choose your experiences as you go. Uh, again, there's like acceleration, there's command, uh, prospecting and so on. So you can choose what background you like and what experience you have. You can choose your spaceships. And like I said, um, as you play this game, you're going to be unlocking more content. So while this level 20 is locked for me right now, um, it will eventually be unlocked for me. I started over from scratch because new computer and all that. Uh, my save didn't carry over, unfortunately. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and load the game I was playing. I'm right now level 12 under the streamer casual normal difficulty mode. And here's my ship here. Um, again, I've rebound a lot of keys, so I'm not going to sort of tell you why I'm pressing what I'm pressing, but this is a dock. You can dock here to do a number of things. There's a mission board where you can take jobs. You can see the level of the mission to the left. Typically, um, these missions are titled a certain way to be consistent so that, for example, this regional delivery, this simply means regional, meaning like it, it's some other part of the galaxy. If I hit escape and open up my main map, which is this. This is this is the galaxy. This is, <laughs> you see how large this is? I chose, I think, it's either medium, I think it was. Anyway, 
Um, you start here, and the little number in the bottom right is like the challenge level, uh, challenge level one. And that's how I gauge whether or not I can handle that area. The green lines are where I can go from where I'm at. Those are my direct connections. And the gray lines are connections to and from other places. So right now, I can go here to this pitch black. I can come up here to this uh, very small area up here and so on. So I am here. And as I was saying, a regional delivery is like, okay, go here to the le uh, or go here. And you enter these locations via jump gates. I'm going to go ahead and open up my local map. And this is this is where I'm at now. So I can ping and, and set waypoints like so, but primarily you're going to be using these jump gates that are around the map as you discover it, and then you'll be warping to those locations. For example, this 2919 coordinate, if I come back to the main map, one of these will say 29, there's 2919. So if I go to that warp gate, then I'll... I'll, I'll arrive here at this location. So traveling around isn't all that complicated. Um, I love that this map also tells you what you have stored in your stations. You can actually take your inventory and store it in stations, and then you can pick up stuff later from that location. One thing I'm still confused about, though, is that if I go to the hangar, on the right-hand side, you can see in the station. These are the items that are currently being stored in the station. And then there's the resource stash which I can access from anywhere. Some of my items are going to the resource stash, and some of them are going in the station. I don't know why that is. Why are some of them going to the station and some of them going to the resource stash? So if I load this, um, if I just put it on my ship, which is now it's up here, if I click on nickel, there's deposit number and deposit all jettison destroy. There's no, there's no choice to either put it into the station or put it into my resource stash. So it's like some items are hard-coded to go into stations when you store them, and some are coded to go into your resource stash. I don't like that. I would have preferred the Drox operative-style top-down gameplay where, like in Diablo, you've got a personal stash that you can always access from anywhere, and then you've got these other chests that are scattered around and you can access locally. Um, so I, I, I don't like that there's a separate inventory system. I, I wish I could freely move things over from one stash to the other uh, so that I can access stuff anywhere. Even if there's a limit on this stash, I would still like to be able to access these things from anywhere. Uh, so anyway... Getting back to the game, um, the UI and the menus, I think, are the biggest challenge of this game. It's not actually fighting things. It's just navigating the UI and trying to figure out what it is you want to do. Um, for example, let's say that... Let's see if I can find one that's actually a good example. No, let's do... No, looking for something with rewards. Pathfinder. Okay. In this case basic scanner you can actually see the reward versus what you have currently equipped but not all the time will i get that prompt which leads me to go okay now i've got to find my hanger and go okay what do i have equipped i have the light laser equipped um like okay let's say i i find a small laser okay which is different from the light laser they won't compare the two because they're not the same thing even though a small laser and a light laser are both weapons the game will not compare them as far as I can tell, so I don't know if this small laser is going to be better than my light laser. So I'm constantly like, okay, I gotta go to the hangar, gotta go to my ship loadout, and go, okay, is this, is this have more DPS than my current weapon? I wish there was a way to compare items, uh, weapons regardless of what they were titled, if that makes any sense. Um, there's a trade menu. Um, you can buy ammo. Uh, different stations will have different items that you can buy. Drone parts, microchips. Some of these things will be necessary to complete uh, those jobs that I was showing you earlier. Uh, you can also buy new ships. I started off with this Class 2 yacht, but um, I can go as high as, at least with this, the Class 5 cruiser. I don't, I'm pretty sure there's more above that. This is only like the level one station. I can only imagine what's out there waiting for me. Um, but yeah, you can buy various pieces of equipment and so on. So as far as actually moving around, I'm going to hit M. And this little flashing thing down there, that is 
uh, quest that I'm, I think I can turn in. I guess I'll head down that way. And as far as the controls go, on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see an interface. Uh, upper left is your ship setup. This is just... This is what you have equipped weapon-wise. This is what you have equipped equipment-wise. Each of these do different things. Some of them are buffs. Some of them are necessary for ship power and so on. Ship crew, yes, you can even get uh, crew members to go onto your ship. You're limited by, I guess, ship size. But you can actually assign crew members and get buffs in, in various categories, which is kind of cool. Um, and then over here, there's character. As you level up, you gain skill points, and you can assign them across these trees. Um, my only complaint here is that you don't have unlimited resets. You've, you've got one reset available, and I believe that I think every 20 levels or something like that, it gives you another reset point. So you kind of have to pick and choose carefully what you want. And then if you decide, well, I don't want this anymore. It was stupid. I, I don't want to do mining anymore. This is boring. I want to do combat. Well, if you're out of resets for right now, you're kind of screwed. I would have preferred some kind of always be able to pay gold for a reset kind of thing so that players aren't tied down to waiting 20 levels for a reset point. There may be other ways to do it, but I have not come across it yet. Um, knowledge, as you continue to do things a la, say, Oblivion, uh, the Elder Scrolls Oblivion, as you can or Skyrim, as you continue to do things, you level up in that skill. There's tech, space pilot, fleet commander, geology, and explorer. And as you, again, do things, you just, you... Yeah, it says required to install better equipment. So I need to level up my tech if I want to install better equipment. We're crafting, scavenging, that kind of thing. Um, and I can increase my fleet size by defeating enemies while commanding a fleet and so on. Um, I think I I think you can hire mercenaries in this game that may contribute to that. If that's, a, if that's the case, I may want to experiment with that a bit more. Perks. Uh, these are perks that I picked up as I continue playing. This is an early supporter perk, which doesn't seem to do anything. It just says karma. I don't know what that means. I just think it's like a special thank you. Uh, and then any stats that you might have. You have reputation across the various... Uh, categories, the different factions that are in the game. Um, other buttons up here. Sector map already showed you. Galaxy map already showed you. Quest log. It, as far as I can tell, there's no limit to how many active quests you can have. As you can see, I've got close to 10 quests here. All of them are either regional or local delivery. I find the other ones a bit annoying. Um, for example, not not the hunting a pirate one, but the one where you need a specific item. You need to buy it from, a, you have to first find it at a station, then buy it, and then deliver it. Whereas the regional deliveries and local deliveries, those just, they give you the package, which is just this non-interactable item that you cannot interact with or sell or anything. You don't need to do anything. You just pick it up, and you deliver it, and that's it. Those are the easiest ones to do. It's like you're a mailman, essentially. But there are other ones that you can get that force you to uh, buy, f f find the items, buy them, and then deliver them somewhere. Um, shift lets you um, just boost, which is nice. Upper left-hand corner is hit points, energy, and shield. Oops, I just went through a warp gate. Not something I wanted to do. <laughs> I, was, I was too busy paying attention to uh, the interface on the left, and I went through a warp gate by accident. Pretty good thing, too. I think that was a pirate, or, a pirate group or something. Anyway, there's ener energy control on the left, too. Uh, by default, they're at 100, and this will control... Um, what their charge rate is, and uh, if you have them set to regular or lower, your energy will recharge faster. Um, so if you see yourself in the negative, then you've assigned too much power. You've overclocked too much. Luckily, um, I took skills in the beginning that um, give me more recharge uh, to my to my reactor. So I'm able to overclock essentially at full power without any sort of drawback, which is kind of nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just move down here, interact with that. And look, I completed my mission, scout mission. Go back to receive a reward. You will receive uh, deuterium warp drive. Okay, basic warp drive for fast travel. Uses stored energy or energy cells. I'll hit complete quest. And yep, I can pick up more things if I want. This supply run, this is another one I don't like. It just says like, obtain three blue crystal and then go to civilian station four. Well, if you intend to craft, you'll need blue crystals and red crystals and other crystals that you find as you destroy things or mine rocks. So like, if you intend to do a lot of crafting, then these are not ones that you want to do. Um, that's so I avoid them because I want to craft. Freighter job, that's another thing. Uh, freighter wanted. 
obtain one explosive. Again, this is one of the ones I was talking about. You have to find the item, buy it, and then go to where it tells you to go. Uh, speed booster. Uh, this is PD laser. See, I have a PD laser. I have one equipped. At least I'm pretty sure. So now I have to go to the trouble of going to my hangar. There's my PD laser. Is it better than the reward? It says damage 3.9, DPS 20.5. I have to remember that now. Then go back to the job board. Freighter wanted 2.9, 15. I already forgot. I'm pretty sure the one I have is better. So, like, I'm, that's what I'm saying, like, I wish, the game will sometimes compare your items, but they will not always compare them. So, I don't know if that's a bug or intended or what, but I would love to see uh, better UI interaction to where I can hover over something and clearly see, A, do I even have it, and B, if I have something like it, let me compare, maybe with the one key, compare it to this weapon, and the two key, compare it to this weapon, and three, compare it to this weapon, and so on. I would like to see something like that, so I don't have to keep backing out, hanger, okay, I've got a PD laser, there's my DPS, I've got a light laser too, is the PD laser any better? Oh, damage 9.8, damage D DPS 20.5, now I need to go back to the job board, and, and, and see what I mean? There, there, there's extra steps taken there that I shouldn't have to take. I think the interface should be much more cleaner and more friendly to the player. Uh, maybe there's a way to do it, but I have not figured it out yet. So I'm not going to take any of these jobs for right now. Um, there's also an academy where you can buy crew members if you want. Uh, you can buy contacts if you want as well. Uh, but I'm not going to do any of that. There is a crafting menu. Um, again, you will be crafting things to level up your tech, I believe it is. And you can also acquire blueprints just from completing jobs. So there's a small, there's a another example, small laser. What do I have? How do I compare that to what I have now? It's, it, there's nothing over here to the right that tells me that. So is this small laser better? 6.2 damage 12.3 is this better i want to see what i have now i i don't see it so is it worth crafting i don't know i'd have to back out and look it just that's annoying um but yeah you can craft other things as you go um and then there's ship enhancements down here there's a lot here it's just it's unfortunate that the game forces you to jump through so many hoops just to get some basic information. On occasion, you'll come across debris fields and asteroid fields. I'll go ahead and zoom to one of those now. Um, typically, these debris fields just give you something that you can interact with via scanner. Uh, hit, it says hit C to scavenge, but I have it bound to my mouse button. I think, yeah, it's that button. There we go. And voila, some energy cells and... You better not take that, sir. Okay. Green is good. That means he's on my side. Um, asteroid field, just to show you, you can... If you don't want to do combat in this game, you can mine. Um, so we'll just come up to this real quick. Now, I have something called an asteroid scanner, which lets me scan asteroids. In the upper right-hand corner, you can see asteroid hall, crystal presence, blue crystal, very poor. So I may want to move on to a different one and look for one that, uh, nope, it still says poor, medium, there we go. So you, I have a mining laser, and I can just right-click. I can also left-click and just shoot with my regular weapon, but it's not as efficient, it's just faster. There we go, there's a blue crystal and some iron, so I'll pick that up. And you can you can kind of just sit here and do that if you so choose to. Um, I have not figured out what the different colored asteroids are. This is just asteroid red crystal pure. Okay, so these are probably just giving red crystals these red asteroids, but that one is poor, so I'm not going to bother with it. Um, so that's an asteroid field for you. I am looking for... You know what? Let's, let's warp to another location, maybe... I go to my... Okay, I need to get here. What's directly connected to me? This is six. I'm not sure about that one. I need to get down here, uh, which is connected here. I may want to try and get up there. Another weird thing uh, I've noticed, especially on the smaller maps. Now, this is a fairly big map, but even on the smaller maps, the distribution of difficulty is kind of wonky. So, for example, like, here's a two that I cannot get to directly from my level one. But here's a level five I can directly access. Like, the random generation is a bit weird. I can connect to this five up here, and this two, and this five, and this six. But here's a two that I would have to... 
I guess go, if I wanted to get here, I'd have to maybe come here, then here, then down here, or find a way down here, then come up here. It's just, why are the twos behind fives in terms of progression? So it's just kind of weird how this generates. I would have preferred something a bit more consistent. Ones lead to twos, and twos lead to threes, and so on. I can understand if I was creating a small map, and the game didn't have a choice in the matter, but... Come on, there's pl <laughs> it's plenty of plenty of stars here. It's not like you're you're strapped for locations. You know what I mean? So it's just, just kind of weird how the game is doing that. Um, I want to show you some combat before we go. So maybe we'll just go to uh, 2919, and 2919 is up there. So we'll just head in that general direction, run into some asteroids in the process. It's fine. Okay, uh, that is not it. We'll keep going. There's a civilian station. Oh, I can level up. I, I should probably do that real quick. Skills, um, I'll take uh, any anything with defense. I'm all about defense, so we'll take that. 2919, so I'm just going to fly through this. And hit M and see there's a, that's a friendly mercenary hideout. They're like neutral parties. I, I may have destroyed everything here, too. Um, Alright, so combat in this game is fairly straightforward. I'll, I'll show you the movement real quick. Um, oh, there's something red here. Maybe I can mess with it. Yeah, it's a Red Skull level 7. This might actually be too tough. We'll find out. If I can even catch up to it. I'm hitting it. Oh, oh it went away. Okay. <laughs> it, it completely ignored me. It's like, dude, what are you doing? So right now I'm using the keyboard steering. Uh, on the left, there's a button that you can toggle between. With mouse, it's wherever you're pointed. So I'm, I'm moving my mouse around the screen, and the ship is trying to follow. That's the steer mode. But here, I can hit D and A, and I can strafe left and right. This is so nice. I love this. But when I switch to keyboard, and I hit A and D, it turns me rather than strafes me. And again, I've tried coming here to the controls, like, to try and figure out, this is strafe right and strafe left, it says D and A, so I don't know what it is, I don't know how to change it for the other, I don't know how to change it for the other control mode, I want to be able to strafe, because I like keyboard steer mode better than mouse, but I want to be able to strafe on top of it, so I'm not exactly sure how to deal with that madness, but like I said, this is more of a review rather than, uh, you know, a long-term gameplay video. Um, I know it was kind of lackluster. There's not a whole lot to show you right now because I'm kind of nestled in my home territory. But as you can see, there's a lot that you can do here and a lot more to see. Is it worth $25? I think it is. You could easily spend 10 plus hours in this game just leveling up, having a good time. You can mine, you can trade, you can do combat, you can level up skills, you can unlock things. So um, there's a lot to do here, a lot, lots of crafting. Again, my only real complaint is the interface um, and the inconsistency of the way the map is generated in terms of uh, level difficulty. Um, but really, those are my only complaints thus far, having played uh, for, you know, several hours. But yeah, I, I just, I, I wish it was just easier to compare things and to get the information I'm looking for. But other than that, like, I look forward to leveling up my ship, making it more powerful, um, leveling up my abilities, and just making my character overall stronger. I'm really looking forward to that. So there you go. Uh, that was Star Valor. Go check this one out if you like Freelancer uh, slash open action RPG style games. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching and I will catch you guys next time. Take care.